Now it has won its space in Kenya's history and art, having survived demolition to pave way for the Standard Gauge Railway. The African Heritage House, which is also named as the most photographed house in Africa, stands next to the Nairobi National Park. And in this special feature, KTN's Nicholas Wambua tells us of the Af African artifacts from all countries in Africa stored in this house. <laughs> For 45 years he has lived on this side of the country, Mlolongo, adjacent to the Nairobi National Park. And each day he watches the trains make over 40 trips past his house. This is the African Heritage House. Mad architecture and West African designs does from Lamu make the most photographed house in Africa. Magdalene Odundo. Alan Donovan, the founder, came to Africa in the year 1967 through Nigeria before he began a journey through the entire continent, a journey that involved the collection of artifacts that today make up the monument. So I wanted to make my house as African as possible after studying all the mud architecture through Africa and the coastal architecture of Kenya. And my first collection, <coughs> I was so inspired by the Turkana who used everything in their environment for their dress, for their ornaments, for the beautiful designs. So I made my first collection, I sold my Volkswagen bus that I came into Kenya in, and I used that money to make my first collection of Turkana artifacts. And I exhibited that in Nairobi in 1970, that's when I met Marumbi, that's when the two of us finally set up African Heritage, which was the first Pan-African gallery on the continent. Complete with a living room, several bedrooms, all decorated with African materials, the house provides the best African sense and two balconies giving you the best view to the national park. I was looking for a place that was totally African, that had all the combinations of African culture and I think African wildlife is a big part of African culture. This is where I want to plan the house that's totally African which is what Morumbi always wanted to do as well. I wanted the design, the architecture, the interior, the decor, the furniture, the fittings, the cutlery, everything to be African. Unique African art, well studied and with the collections, Alan Donovan came up with this house. Each material in the house has its own unique story. Rather than looking outside and getting inspiration from Europe and America, why don't people in Africa look at their own historical architecture. There's so many beautiful examples. And also for interior. So this house shows people how to live with African architecture, art, design, furniture, everything. Just the same as Marumbi wanted his house. The efforts of a man who is committed for over 45 years to preserving and showing people how to live with their African art. He is among the pioneers of the Maasai market, with Kenya's one-time Vice President Joseph Murumbi describing him as a man who was keen on preserving the African art. Alan says that the house has also played a major role in preserving the wildlife across the park. But now there's many thousands, so if we were uprooted from our houses, uh, it would mean a lot of uh, light and noise and sewage and especially poaching in the park. We've already lost two rhinos, the only two rhinos that were in this area have been poached. Alan is living to tell the African story in a way no one has. That's the name most photographed house. A plan to run the standard gauge railway through where the house stands was thwarted after concerns were raised citing the implications that will come along with the action. The last drawing I saw of the route was behind the house along Mombasa Road and then it's been only recently that I've been told that the railway is now going through the park. You see, in 1898 when the original railway was built, they had no blasting material. So it's very crooked. If you look from Google, it's like a snake. There's no way a high-speed train could use that route or that railway reserve. They have to straighten their route. With the structure open to the public, he says plans are underway in partnership with a number of universities to make the structure an African study center. He says this is to keep the African art alive in the coming generations. Nick Wambua, K10.
ಕೆ ಟಿ ಎನ್ ನ್ಯೂಸ್